Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Try Hack Me Challenge Anonymous. Um, as always, I'm going to go ahead and get started with doing an MMAP scan. I'm going to use SV to do a service versioning check, and then I'm also going to do dash dash script vuln to check for any pre-existing vulnerabilities. So we can see on port 21 FTP version 2.0.8 is running. On port 22 we have SSH running on version 7.6. And on port 139 and 445, we have SMB running over SAMDA. So let's go ahead and list the shares on this computer. So if you don't know what SMB is, SMB is kind of like a network file sharing system to allow other people on like a typically like a Windows domain to log in and view and write to files that you're allowing to share. So one of the things that you can do is sometimes if you have it enabled, you can, you can log in with no password which will allow us to even view and sometimes even write to some of the files on the server. So let's go ahead and use the SMB client to list all the shares on this on this server. So we can do SMB client and then we're going to do dash L to list and then you just want to paste the IP address. And we're going to go ahead and say just press enter to skip the password and you can see that we can list the shares. So you can see that there's a share name called Pix. So let's go ahead and see what files are in the share. So to do that, we need to do SMB client. And then you want to do four backslashes. And then the IP address. So 10.10.177. .10 and then two backslashes. And then the share you want to access. So in this case, I'm going to do picks. So again, I'm going to press enter because we don't need a password and we're able to access the share. So I'm going to use ls to list the contents and you can see we have two files here. So let's go ahead and get these files. So we do git and then paste the file name and then once again git and then paste the file name. And if we actually open these files they're just some nice pictures of some dogs. So it's nothing too special. Even if you look into steganography there isn't anything here. So we can exit out of this and let's go back and let's check out the FTP service. Right here, FTP version 2.0.8. Let's see if we can log in with an anonymous user. So FTP, and then we're gonna try anonymous, and then no password. So the and it works. So the anonymous login um, is something you can configure to allow people to log into your server just with anonymous as the username and an empty password. So it looks like this service has that enabled. So let's use ls to list the contents. And then let's go into the scripts directory. And you can see that there's this clean.sh file and we have access to read and write to this. So let's go ahead and get this file. Let's go ahead and get all the other files too. So get clean.sh, get remove log, and let's get to do. I'm actually going to stay in this for now and just switch into another terminal over here. And let's check this out. So cat clean.sh. It looks like this script is just used to clean some log files. So we have um, temp files equals zero. It echoes out the temp files. And then if temp files equals zero, then we're just going to say, hey, running cleanup script, nothing to delete. And then it echoes that string to this log file here that we got earlier. And it also, and then it says else, um, if there's anything in the temp files, then we're just gonna remove them and then print out what file we removed. It looks like this script doesn't really work for anything because he set he manually set temp files to be zero here. So let's go ahead and try to edit this and see if it executes anything. So we actually can't execute this script directly from FTP, but what this actually looks like is some type of management scripts. And typically on Linux, management scripts are run through something called cron jobs. So a cron job is kind of just a way to perform regular scheduled tasks such as backups, report generation, and so on. So you could say schedule this task to run every 30 seconds, every minute, every day, or even as specific as every two weeks. Um, so let's try to inject some basic commands and see if we can get anything out of this. So I'm actually gonna copy this log file here. And what we're gonna do is do vim clean.sh I want to manually set a variable out here. I'm just going to call it output. Output equals paste this file. 
And now I'm just going to kind of get rid of everything else here. So now let's try to some basic commands to gain some situational awareness in this machine. So I'm going to use uname dash a, and then I'm going to append this. If you just do one of these, that's that's going to just be like an overwrite. So every time I let's say I wanted to do another command here, like list out the home directory. If I wrote it again using one single operand, then it would just overwrite whatever was here. So we need to use two. So then I'm going to do output. So do you name and then output it to the output file and then same thing here. We're also going to check who am I. And let's see if there's anything, any other users in the home directory. So, and then we're going to output that to the output file. Oops. Whoops. Oh my goodness. So we're going to write that. Um, I'm going to keep this open over here so we can keep editing it. And I'm going to go back to the FTP and in the same directory that this clean.sh is, I'm going to put the new one. So I just replaced it with this one here. And now let's wait and see if um, this log file jumps in size. All right, let's see if there's anything here. Looks like it jumped in size. Let's see if it's anything new. Uh, put out of here. Yeah, so we do see some new stuff here. We see the uname results. We can see we're on the Linux kernel 4.15, 0 through 99. We can see that in the home directory, we have um, that PIX directory that we saw earlier that was probably being shared over SMB. And then we have a user.txt. And this is the who am I results. So we can see we're the nameless one. And he is the only one in the home directory. So let's go ahead and cat out the user.txt. So I'm gonna go over here. And I'm just gonna go up here and replace this. So I'm gonna say cat, um, the home directory, and then user.txt. I'm gonna get rid of these two commands for now. And let's kind of just get the output of that. So I'm gonna do put clean.sh. Again, replacing the current one with this. And now let's just wait a little bit and see if the log file jumps. All right, so let's get the file contents of the log file. So get removed files.log. Jumped up in size again, so let's cut that out. And you can see this is the user.txt flag right there. So nice, let's try to gain some escalated privileges here and let's try to get the root flag. So let's go ahead and check for any files with the SUID bit set. So SUID stands for set user ID. So if I go ahead and type ID into this computer or into this terminal, you can see I have the ID 1000. So if I actually changed my user to root here and then did the same thing, you can see I have a different root. So root will always have the, the ID zero. That's just how it works. But that's what basically we're checking for. We're basically checking for programs that when we execute them, they're gonna change our ID. So this has some practical sense when you think about the password D binary. So this has the SUID bit set. The reason is um, the passwords are stored in, I have to type something in here. The passwords are stored in the ETC shadow file. I don't have access to that. So I can't edit my password or check what the password has to is because I don't have access to that file. But when I run password D, this, whenever I run this, it elevates my privileges and then it allows me to read this file. So that's just kind of like a practical use case for SUID binaries. So to search for these, let's go back in our um, file here and we can use the command find and then we're gonna do forward slash and then we're gonna just do slash perm and then slash 4000, which just stands for the SUID bit. Then we're going to output um, this to our output file. So we're just going to do sign $output. So I'm also going to delete the rest of those commands, save this, and let's go ahead and put this back on the server. Oh, we got a timeout. So let's put that back. Put clean.sh. And let's go ahead and wait a minute for the cron job to go ahead and run. All right, so I'm going to get the log file. We can see it went up in size. So let's go ahead and cut that out. 
and you can see that we have this big list of binaries that have the SUID set. So a lot of these are standard, mount, ping, su, right, su to change our user, password D, sudo, a lot of these are standard. So there's a great website called GTFO bins that we can use to check to see what binary in here we can use to escalate our privileges. So I'll leave this in the description, but it has this nice little search bar here that we can just kind of go ahead and check. So if we just do password D, right, it's empty for that, sudo, nope. Um, there is one though that eventually does do something and that is M. So if we check in M, you can see that if the SUID bit is set, we are able to escalate our privileges. So here's the SUID section and it says that if the binary has the SUID bit set, it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be abused to access the file system. So the, the dash P option is basically used to say on older Linux systems, if you don't pass the dash P, it won't allow you to run M with elevated or SH with the SUID privileges. So in this spot for this actual challenge, um, I had to pass the dash P option to get this to work. So let's go ahead and edit the script. Let's delete that line. It's this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do dash C, which is command. So what command we want to do. And let's just go ahead and say, who am I? And then we're going to output the rest to the output file. So save that. Let's go ahead and put that on the FTP server. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get the log file. So get removed files.log. Let's cut that out. And you can see we're at, we're the root user, so that actually worked. So let's go back into our script here, and let's go ahead and cat the root flag. So I'm gonna do cat, and then I'm gonna do root dot. Actually, it's not that. Root, and then root dot txt. Save that. I'm gonna put the clean script back on. Put clean dot sh. Get the log file. And you can see this is the root flag. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That was the anonymous challenge. If you have anything you guys want me to take a look at, please let me know.